Hello my Sock Universe, that was a very interesting Champions League round, more goals, more drama, we had quite a few comeback wins, uh, even from 2-0 down, 2-0 is not a safe lead, especially if you're a newbie to the Champions League, uh, we had quite some big results in there, you know, big clash clashes like we had Napoli against Real Madrid, which I think was the outstanding fixture uh, of, of it all, but we also had Newcastle thumping 4-1 of PSG, so many, many, many good things happening uh, there. Yes, not all the results did go the way that I wanted, but we're here to talk about them all. And I would say we'll go uh, group by group, although when I put them in there more uh, chronologically ordered. So yeah, let's jump straight in, not lose more time. I want to start in Group A uh, with Bayern winning 2-1 in Copenhagen, but it was not easy at all. They were 1-0 down through Leraguer in the 56th minute. Very tentative performance from Bayern. Musiala gets an equalizer. Uh, and then Thomas Müller has a big run and seemingly he remembered. I had this big miss in Wembley. Uh, and so he squares it over to Matthias Tell, gets his feet sore sorted to get a winner for Bayern, which is probably big in terms of, of the group. I think even a draw would have been um, okay and probably would have been the just result there. Why would have been a draw okay? Because United managed to lose to Galatasaray. Uh, again, you thought that they actually had won that game when Hoyland makes it 2-1. Scoring two, have, having a third one, this, this, this is a lot. Overall looking not bad, let's put it that way. It seemed like you, you know, have more quality. Yes, Sahar got an equalizer, but it went all pear-shaped after Atu Koglu uh, gets an equalizer. Then uh, Casemiro uh, brings a, pl a player down in the box. I think it was Icar Icardi is getting a second yellow sent off right there. Casemiro needs help for, for United. And you think still it swings towards United because Icardi misses the penalty. A little bit later, great finish, and it's three to for Galatasaray, uh, which gives them a huge shot in the arm and a big win. And the uh, troubles over United are just increasing at this point. Uh, the other English team that was playing on Tuesday also managed to lose. Yes, Gabriel Jesus gave them an early lead at loss. It was kind of a little bit of a weird jersey matchup, although I think that loss, as I said in my jersey review, have played in golden jerseys before. In any case, um, more trouble was than a foot. Uh, Thomason can uh, equalize and then Saka has to come off with an injury, even though he has an injury already. I don't know if it was precaution because uh, they have to play City on the weekend or if he's, re he's, he's really not able to and there was a big in in injury out there. Uh, and then Wahi gets the winner for loss and it's a big win for loss and that group also seems to be wide open at this very moment. Why wide open? Because PSV also I think they largely controlled that game, especially in the first, first half. It was more or less, uh, will they get the, the lead or not? But they find themselves too much open. Uh, uh, early Pedrosa goal is not given for a hand, hand, handball. Then Ramos assists Gude, who looks weird without his ponytail back, uh, back, back, back there. And it seems like Sevilla will uh, ride this out and get home with, with, with the win. Uh, then a penalty is given, De Jong converts, but right off the kickoff, Eneziri, uh, it was a bit more, more than a minute, uh, Pupus with the lead again, but then very late on Teze gets an EQ. So it was late drama, PSV sells the searching a point. And it's kind of weird because PSV is really good in the Dutch league at the moment. However, in the Champions League, 4-0 loss to Arsenal, now 2-2 is against Sevilla. Uh, they leave themselves too much, too much open for really good teams to pounce. And Sevilla is not that good. Let's be honest with that as well. Um, then, another drama game. Union Berlin in a full Olympia stadion in Berlin. Uh, had an early goal through Golson, the is allowed. Then, uh, Geraldo Becker. Scores 2-4 for them and it seems like they finally will get over Braga. And remember last season in the Europa League, they also played against Braga. I think winning away from home, losing at home. But they played at the Alta first right there. Uh, Ivan Yekate pulls one back just before the half. Bruma right after the half equalizes. And then more or less with the last kick, kick of the game. When, uh, the game had settled, but late on there were pushes from both sides to win it. And then Castro in the 94th minute with a, a long range shot. Gets a winner for Braga, huge win for, for them, Union Berlin fans a little bit devastated, you know, after losing in the last minute against Real Madrid, zero with the soul, now against Braga, doesn't look good. And it was the Iberian teams that uh, were in this group, uh, the 
the all the overall winners napoli against real madrid was a really exciting game uh up and down was really what you would expect and napoli really put madrid under a lot of pressure early on getting a at that point deservedly through Ostigard. However, Real Madrid is one of those teams that you, don't, you cannot only kill once, you have to do it over and over and over again. You have to take your, your chances and you cannot make mistakes like Di Lorenzo. Playing it out is intercepted by Bayer Bellingham, who plays into Vinicius Jr., who of course can only score from that, that position. And then how the entire Napoli midfield cannot bring down Jude Bellingham to 4-4-2-1 uh, for, for, for is of course something one has to look into but it also shows the individual class not only of Real Madrid but especially for Jude Bellingham who is just on the next level. Uh, after the half Napoli can equalize with a brilliant Zielinski penalty but you know genius and madness are so close to together because if this is just a few centimeters to the left this is go this is not going going, going in but it's 2-2 two, two. and you really thought this might uh, Napoli might be pooping up, but then a brilliant Valverde shot. It goes down as a merit own goal because it bounces off him. But uh, what a laser that was to win it all. Again, I think Real Madrid showed that they are the more mature team. They are uh, the higher quality team than Napoli. Napoli just don't uh, take all their chances. And so a big night in Naples ends with a 3-2 win for Real Madrid, who are now full control of that group. Um, it might be funny to say, but uh, Real Sociedad does seem like the best team in Group D at the moment. They go to Salzburg and give Salzburg, who had just beaten Benfica. And yes, things have been rocky since that Benfica win for Salzburg, but give them a real lesson of how it should be played. Oyar Sabal in the seventh minute, they, it was coming for all the seven minutes that they're going to score, and then uh, Br uh, Bryce Mendes make it a comfortable 2 0 lead that uh, Real Sociedad can then lean back and Pull it home, 2-0. That was impressive. Uh, and Salzburg has to learn the lessons from there because they didn't have many answers. Only late on when it was the game was already gone, there were a few chances potentially for them to score. Inter also took Benfica, gave Benfica a little bit of a lesson. It was only one goal through Thuram. Um, was a little bit flat, flat flattening to, to, to Benfica. I think uh, Inter had many, many chances, should have scored uh, more than the one single goal. But, you know, again, like Rassos, they had a little bit of a bounce back win. And those two teams seem to be the class of that group uh, at this moment. Let's move over to uh, the Wednesday games. Another drama, there were actually two drama games early on. It's three, two three twos uh, to start the day. You don't get this often. Feyenoord really gave it their all in Madrid. Uh, took twice the lead. Uh, Ueda shot that the bounces off to Hermoso. It's an own, own goal. Give gives to Morata. He duly equalizes. But then Hanschko, defender, gets Feyenoord in the lead. Then Gernot Trauna has the chance to score. I think what it would have been his first uh, goal for Feyenoord. Uh, cannot get too much direction on, on it and goes wide. It really seemed like Feyenoord is going to go with a lead into halftime until they are uh, lackadaisically in defense and Griezmann just sees a ball floating and basically kicks it into, into net. And then right after the half, Morata strikes again. It's 3-2 and it's out of nowhere. A game that, as I said, Feyenoord gave, gave it all. They probably would have deserved more uh, out of this, at least a point, but they're losing it 3-2 and this is kind of what you, you have to pay for your in, in, inexperience at this stage and also playing a much, much better, uh, uh, hi more highly touted, not much better, but a more highly touted team like Atletico Madrid, who now again look good in this group, I would say, on a good path. Uh, Celtic, not similar story to Feyenoord. Celtic had Lazio right there. However, again, finishing is letting down. And this is funny because Lazio is not, not a team that is very well known for finishing this season. Uh, Furuhashi gives them an early lead. I think it was the first goal in the late slot uh, on Wednesday. However, in the 29th, Vecino uh, can e e equalize. And then um, you've got to love the energy for Celtic going uh, up and down. Uh, they thought they had a winner by Palma, but Palma, who just come come on, uh, he is offside and then very late on, you know, Pedro might be old, but he's still great. And Pedro scores the winner for Lazio in the 95th minute. Also means that Lazio now are uh, looking all right in this group. But I think their matchups against Feyenoord will be the side again. Europa League rematches from last year. Said it already in my short video. Uh, Dortmund, Milan, this was not a nil-nil. 
This was a game that could have been 2-2. Uh, maybe Pioli had a weird formation uh, to star style with Pobega, uh, Reinders and Musa in midfield, um, which I don't know what was his thing. Is he thinking that maybe he, he wanted to keep uh, Dortmund a little, little bit more at bay. But it got to be said, it was an up and down match with chances on each uh, side. I would say Dortmund won all the statistics. And maybe if you look over, overall, Dortmund was the more proactive team in a sense. However, whenever there was a counter, like Milan were really, really dangerous. And I think the better chances fell Milan's way. Look, especially first of all, a chance by Giroud that he just has to bury. There was one by Pulisic. Uh, there was a double chance, I think, um, Reinders and Leao in there as well. This could have been a win for Milan. And while I think that the draw is a just reflection of what happened on the field, I think the win for Milan would not have been undeserved, but the same thing can be said also for, for Dortmund. Uh, I found the last few minutes really, really, really crazy because as soon as Milan got the ball, they tried to dart it forward. Half the time they're losing the ball, handing uh, chances to the, this young Dortmund side who uh, really I uh, can hurt you. But once they're past the Dortmund line, it's super dangerous going the other uh, uh, other way. As I said, I think it was a really good game to watch. It was the only game that I've uh, more or less really followed closely. Uh, but it's nil-nil and I'm really wondering, yes, it's great to have two clean sheets against two quality opponents, but you should have scored by now. I think uh, the expected goals for, for, for Milan should have been by at least three at this point. And that's what's worrying me because now PSG is up next. However, PSG play like they played in Newcastle, I'm not so worried. PSG may have, have all the possession in the world. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, Newcastle were pressing. If you cannot get past the first pressing line, you, uh, you will always have trouble. If your front line, and especially Kylian Mbappe, decide to take a day off, but it was also Dembele, it was also Cole Colman, it was almost comically how they did not want to work for the rest of the, of the team, but just waiting and saying, please give us the ball and we are, we, are dangerous, we are dangerous. You have having trouble, especially in an atmosphere like Newcastle, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, first uh, goal came because um, Marquinhos' ball is in, in this intercepted. He cannot get past the first pressing line. For uh, Isaac shot and uh, the rebound Almiron, and it's 1-0 for uh, New Newcastle. And then uh, a real barrage of, chant, uh, of, of chances where Donnarumma had, had to save a few times uh, in, in, in the end. Uh, Dan Byrne puts it into the net. Donnarumma gets it out, but clearly over the line. And they were thinking, what did, uh, was the offside by Guimaraes, which, uh, which was not the case. So uh, that was a, a real power goal. Right, I have long stuff, make, make three. Yes, Lucas Hernandez pulls one back, but it was too little, little too late. And the other form of a share. Yes, they were then a little bit better in the game after, after that, but they were never really threatening. This was a really deserved and a great win for Newcastle, who are now in control of this group. Um, we had the game between Chavanas and Stan Young Boys, was actually also. Uh, was Tended to fall for fall asleep until Young Boys is called out on the counter attack that Bukhari and Jaya uh, convert to make it 1 0 after they have Ugrinitz and a penalty by Itten. Turns around for eBay, and you thought that eBay might actually move on and get a first win over uh, Javenas Vesta because uh, this is an op opponent they have all on, on lost to, but very late on Bukhari uh, gets an equalizer. Javenas uh, is, of course, pressing for the winner, but it's a 2 2 draw. Uh, probably the more entertaining in the end than it was initially. City, of course, much better than uh, Leipzig, especially in the first half. Phil Foden giving them the lead. Yes, Openda then equalizes, and you thought maybe there's something on the line, but Julian Alvarez scores one, assists one by Doku, uh, and later on, City get uh, what I would think is a deserved win in that game. Uh, we had another drama game where uh, Champions League newbie in Antwerp had a 2 0 lead. Muya and Baligwisha, it was a 2 0 halftime lead. But right after they have Sikan pull, pulls pull back, and Radiski, Radiski, uh shot is deflected into his own net. And it's 2 2, and then Sikan makes it 3 2 for Schachter. However, there was even more. There was a clear penalty, a hands pen penalty, and Alderwell steps up in the 97th minute, puts it wide. Should have been a 3 3. I think it would have been a more. Um, Accurate re-reflection, re re although uh, you saw that Schachter is probably a little bit more seasoned than Antwerp at this stage. 
And then the other game that was the top uh, the top clash. Yes, Ferran Torres gets the winner just before the half for Barca. Honestly, Porto must feel really hard down by. I mean, it was not the greatest game, but there was a clear penalty decision in the first half that was not given, and then in the second half there was a penalty penalty given. Joao Cancelo uh, have, have, having having the hand in play, but then it was not given because there was a handball by a Porto player just before that outside of the box. Although I think when I look at it. Honestly, might this not be here on the uh, uh, line? Really, really, really weird. I think Porto must must definitely feel hard done by with that. And so standings, I show uh, I show you. We see Galatasaray right now in second place. The big uh, winners are of the Devon United already in quite some trouble to be honest uh we have loss ahead of arsenal is also something you didn't expect real madrid control the group c group d now real Sociedad. as i said i feel they might be uh, the real deal in this uh, group i think real Sociedad and inter might be the two, two teams coming out of that one um atleti and lazio after their draw in the first game are now in con um uh, ahead in that one Feyenoord must get something against La Lazio and same thing has to go for Milan against PSG because otherwise it's Newcastle and PSG. Dortmund already also in early trouble but that group very very even for now. City will run through this group and I think even live Le Leipzig is too good for Juventus Vesta and the young boys although it might be that Juventus Vesta gets a point or a win over, Le over Leipzig but in, in, in the end Leipzig will prevail. And same thing goes for Barca and Porto because I don't think a Schachter have it in them uh, to really hurt Porto. We saw in the first game Porto actually won easily over them. Winners and losers, biggest win of course Galatasaray but also Real Sociedad doing quite well, neither Galatasaray shirt I think. Loss, Newcastle, Lazio, Atletico, those are the big wins, Pro Im Schachter and Praga, uh, you see it right there. Uh, and same thing goes for the losers, it's basically the reverse from there with United, Salzburg, Feyenoord and Celtic being on the losing end. Who are now the favorites in the Champions League? City still very much overwhelming, more or less already qualified for the rounds. Same as for Bayern, but they're just not as good. Uh, Madrid and Barcelona also more or less through, and so therefore in four and uh, three and four. Arsenal lost a few spots, but I think st I still think yeah, Arsenal should get, get it off it and if they get something going, they could actually be dangerous there. I'll never overlook Inter. Uh, I give you also here the next uh, two rounds. I think we have to look at Sevilla Arsenal uh, as one from the early ones. Galatasaray Bayern sounds really, really interesting, I have to say. And then, of course, we have uh, the bounce. Can Benfica bounce back against the Real Sociedad? I think that will be an interesting one. It's actually a Portuguese Spanish uh, evening. Feyenoord Lazio is an early kick here that I think is worth watching. And then, yeah, uh, choose your poison. I will be PSG Milan. Newcastle against Dortmund is also a really, really good one, I would say. So that was it for me from the Champions League. Um, really, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. As I said, not all the results fell my way, but I really enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought, thought about this. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!